All right, what's up everybody? This is a quick starter guide for My Time at Sand Rock. If you never heard of this, it's a direct sequel to My Time at Porsche. And what this game is, it's a crafting, base building, action, farming, life sim. It's pretty much all the things. And from my time with Sandrock, I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks that should help you get going with it. So I'm going to start a brand new save file and start this right from the beginning. So the very first thing you're tasked with is making a recycler. I went ahead and collected all the materials already for that. And I'm going to plump that down and anything that uses power is going to function off your water tank here. I only have 8%, but I'm going to show you how to top that off in a moment. And the day is winding down. I've used up all my stamina, which is the two out of 304 down there at the bottom. And there's really not much we can do with a depleted stamina. We can't hit any rocks. We can't hit any trees. However, there are things you can still do at the end of the day. Now, one of those things you can do is clean up. As you see, there's trash all around Sand Rock, and that doesn't cost any stamina. So you can run around, clean up some junk. It'll give you a little bit of experience and also some scraps, which you can put into your recycler. Another thing, there's a bunch of treasure chests just sitting around this town. Some of them are on buildings, some of them are a little more hidden, but that's another thing you can do. And if you're really trying to get the most out of your day, you can also punch or run into some tumbleweeds, and those will give you some resources and cost no stamina as well. So I got our recycler going, and what that's going to do is turn these scraps into useful resources. And this not only consumes water, but you have to power it with these items as well. You can either distribute this fuel yourself, or you can just hit autofill, and it'll max out the gauge if you have the right resources. But uh, that has two minutes left until that's done. Those are more of a passive way to get materials. Now, after you've registered your workshop, you can go to the commission board and take some of these side quests. Uh, you can only take one at a time right now. There is a cat in the video. You're not part of this video, dude. You have any tips? No, got nothing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the one to make a furnace because we need a furnace anyways. And that's going to give us some nice gold and experience and some reputation. You will start to run out of water here pretty soon, so there's a few ways you can top this off. You can either make your own, which uses 10 dew, or you can head over here and buy some if you have some gold. You can find this place over in the south of town. So over here you're going to find a shop where you can buy some water with some gold. And it's kind of expensive towards the start, but later on it's not really much at all. So next we're going to head over to the salvage area, which is one of the most important places in the game. Because this is going to give you all kinds of things you can throw into the recycler, and also it's going to give you data disks, which are used to unlock new stuff, which I'll show here in a second. Oh, scorpion! Get the scorpion! These are pretty important here at the start. These are shiny scorpions, and they sell for 64 money, which is a good chunk of change here at the start of the game. And anytime you're using one of your tools to smack on stuff or salvage things, there's a chance for one of those scorpions to pop out and run away, and you need to grab them quickly before they escape. Scorpion! Got him. Now, to use those data disks that you just got, you're going to want to head to the research center, which is on the east side of town. So in here, there's going to be two tabs of things you can start researching, and I would recommend sticking with either the processor or the grinder here at the start. A lot of these other things are not going to do you much good at the very start of the game. And those do take a certain amount of time. This will take one day to research. You don't get it right away. Some of the more advanced ones will take multiple days until you actually get them. All right, we have everything we need to make us the furnace, which will also complete that side quest we took. Sweet. Excuse me, sir. I have your furnace ready. Now give me that cash. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to head over to the general store real quick and sell off a few things before we expand our inventory. Sell off those scorpions. That's a nice 128. Going to go sell that gold ore. We don't need that just yet. 
We do have a pretty full inventory here, but if you press this little button in the bottom right, you can spend some of your gold to just buy backpack slots. Now, I'm the type of person who hates micromanaging full inventories, so I'm going to spend all my money and get 28 extra slots. How nice is that? Now, before I turn in for the night, I did get a furnishing item. And these are going to go into your house and give you passive stat boosts. For example, this ceramic bottle gives us a defense plus three. So you're decorating and RPGing at the same time. So I just talked to this guy and he gave me this sweet chair. What does this chair do? 51 HP. Nice. So there are multiple uses for talking to people. They sometimes give you gifts. But you can also give them gifts to increase your relationship. You can chat with them once a day to improve it by just a marginal amount. You can play this little card game with them, which will also increase their reputation. Or you can spar with them. Let's go ahead and duel to the death. It's not really to the death. So other than their health, they also have a gauge underneath that, which is those yellow circles. That's going to be their break meter. And when that's broken, they're going to take extra damage. So make sure you don't back off after that's broke. Just go in and get in as much DPS as you can. And it will come back, so you will have to frequently break their stance. So after you challenge them to brutal combat, you will get some money and increase that reputation just a bit. It also gives you some experience to your combat stat, which I will show you right here. There is knowledge in all the different types of things you can do in this game. There's gathering, workshop, combat, and social. So I switched over to my other file to show you a bit more about the skill trees. And something I recommend getting as soon as you can is the water conservation and the fuel saving in the workshop tab. Those are going to reduce how much water and fuel all of your structures take, so I recommend getting that as soon as possible. Also in the combat tab, there's four different weapon types. There's also a ranged weapon as well, but I recommend you pick one of the melee types and just stick with it. Because as you can see, when you get it all the way maxed out, you get a much longer combo string. So having those extra hits in your combos is gonna make combat go a lot smoother and you're gonna kill things a lot faster. Duh, right? Now, as time passes, some things are going to get sand buildup. For example, you can see a little bit here when we get out the feather duster. There's some on the assembly station. And you need the feather duster to go ahead and clean things. Now, these look fairly clean already. But if they got too much sand buildup, they will get a debuff that reduces their effectiveness. So that is why you need to get the feather duster... Eventually, this isn't going to be a problem right at the start, but that's how you use it. I have one last thing before I close this out. If you talk to Fang, who runs the medical clinic, you can do some acupuncture, which will be a respec of your knowledge points skill trees. So if you happen to mess those up, don't worry, you can just spend a little bit of money and reset them. So that's pretty much the basics of my time at Sandrock. That's nowhere near everything, that's just the stuff towards the very, very start of the game. There's a lot to this. But hopefully that helped you get the crafting ball rolling. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.